Good evening. Good evening. All right. Thank you, Moises. It's a great honor to be the host tonight. And we're going to have fun tonight, but I'm going to keep it on schedule. I'm, I'm going to keep it on schedule. You know, as a board member of the Housing Assistance Council, I am truly proud of the work that HAC and its partners have accomplished in so many rural areas. Tonight, we are celebrating those people whose accomplishments have made an impact on communities and, and families in rural America. And they truly, truly are a distinguished group. Our first would be former Senator Christopher S. Kit Bond. See, I got it all in there for you, <laughs> all of it. Kit Bond is a sixth generation Missourian, born in St. Louis in 1939. He grew up in Mexico, Missouri, where he still, still tends to his chestnut orchard. Bond graduated cum laude from the Wilson, Woodrow Wilson School at Princeton University in 1960 and, re and received his law degree from the University of Virginia in 1963, having graduated first in his class. After serving as a clerk to the chief judge of the Fifth Circuit Court in, of Appeals in Atlanta, Bond practiced law in Washington, D.C. before returning home to Missouri in 1969. Bond became an assistant attorney general under former Senator John Danforth before being elected state auditor in 1970. Bond was chief counsel to Missouri, to, of Missouri's Consumer Protection Division at age 33. I want to say that again. At age 33, Kit Bond became the 47th governor of Missouri on January 8, 1973, the youngest governor the state has ever had. I got I to give it up for that. <laughs> Bond was reelected to a second term as governor in 1980. As Governor Bond worked with his Missouri Housing Development Commission to ensure low income, affordable public housing was available. After his second successful term as governor, Bond continued to serve Missouri through his newly won seat in the United States Senate. In the 1986 election year, Bond was the only Republican to capture a seat previously held by a Democrat. Based upon his, soul, his solid ability to protect and advance Missouri's interests in the United States Senate, Bond was returned by Missouri voters to the U.S. Senate in 1992, 1998, and 2004. While serving in the United States Senate, Bond built a reputation as a statesman who works in a bipartisan way and advocates a strong and well-equipped U.S. military, improved care for our nation's veterans and men and women in uniform, and better relations with Southeast Asia. He earned the reputation as a reformer of our nation's intelligence community while serving as vice chairman on the Senate Select Intelligence Committee. He is also recognized as a national leader in the promotion of plant biotechnology. As a senior member of the Senate Appropriations Committee and ranking member of the subcommittee that funds the nation's housing program, Bond became known as an advocate for improving public housing, enhancing community development, reducing lead paint poisoning among children in public housing, and fighting to end homelessness. Bond pushed for reforms to housing policies such as focusing on permanent supportive housing, improving local, state, and federal conditions, and providing supportive services like child care, mental health, and substance abuse treatment and job training. The senator also secured millions of dollars for programs aimed at helping those who most, who most commonly suffer from chronic homelessness, including the mental, mentally ill, those with substance abuse problems, disabled veterans suffering from compact-related uh, injuries like post-traumatic stress disorder. During the 2008-2010 recession, Bond also pushed for policies to stabilize the housing market and allow more families to avoid foreclosures. Bond is married to Linda Bond, son, his son Samuel Bond, a lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps, served two tours in Iraq, the last as a scout sniper platoon leader. Sam is married to Margaret Cruz, 
an attorney from Richmond, Virginia. They currently live and work in Atlanta, Georgia, and have one child. Since leaving the United States Senate, Bond joined Thompson Colburn LLP as a partner and formed Kit Bond Strategies LLP. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the recipient of the Cochrane Collins Awards for Distinguished Service in Housing for Rural Poor, Senator Kit Bond. Oh, yeah, sorry to put this through on that. Oh, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, first, uh, my sincerest thanks to the Housing Assistance Council, particularly to Moises and Joe the Hack Board of Directors, and to Barbara Burnham of LISC for nominating me. Where's Barbara? Bar Barbara, okay, Barbara, she's, uh, she's been a friend for a long time, I'll have to confess. I had somebody on the inside working for me, and she did. Uh, but it's, it's quite an honor to be recognized along with Hal Rogers. I know he's, he's doing the work we, we all need to have done on the Appropriations Committee, so when he comes here, when he gets here, we're going to give him a, a big rousing hoo-ah, hello, thank you, because he has, he has done what I always believed is important. He's worked on a bipartisan basis, which is the very best way to make sure that we can serve our constituents and our country. So many congratulations and thanks to Hal Rogers. And I got to put in a word about our, the, the hack board president and uh, our MC for this evening. Andy Bias is a new resident of Missouri in Kansas City. You know what? When he came to Kansas City, the Royals started winning, and they went all the way to the World Series. So, all right, Andy. Maybe if you'd come a little earlier, we would, uh, we would have won the World Series, but... But anyhow, if I decide to run again, uh, Andy, you'll be hearing from me. However, that ain't going to happen. Uh, I was honored to be Missouri's youngest governor and youngest senator, but I don't uh, aspire to be Missouri's oldest senator, so, so I'm, out, I'm out of that game. But uh, it's wonderful to be here tonight to see so many friends, uh, many of whom I saw at the event uh, uh, this summer in Louisville, who, like me, are dedicated to shining the light on the unique housing needs of rural America. And I would say it is a tremendous honor to receive this award uh, named for the Cochran and Collings Award after two giants in rural housing for a cause that I am personally very passionate about. I'm grateful for tonight's award and the recognition from a group I respect so much, but the real recognition is owed to you, each one of you, who day in and day out are on the front lines of the fight to bring affordable housing to rural America. Thank you for what you are doing and you continue to do. I'm also very glad to see so many young people here tonight. As you all are aware, this year's uh, conference theme is the need to renew and rebuild. And you've got to replace old folks like us with younger talent. That's an important part of it, too. And thanks to the young people who are here. You young folks are the ones who will be carrying the fight into the future. And boy, we have had some good fights. <laughs> Many of you here tonight may, uh, were my key allies during my years in the Senate, especially during my time on the HUD Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, we worked to try to get the Department of Housing and Urban Development to serve rural America. I worked with, uh, uh, with Tom Harkin. Uh, and uh, uh, we pushed for some money to go into HUD to serve the rural area. We tried to drag them kicking and screaming into rural America, and uh, Senator Mikulski, who was my great ally at the time also, and Senator Murray, who was my ally more recently, uh, established the HUD Rural Housing Program. But every year, OMB and HUD worked to kill the program. I kept putting it back in, it wasn't real popular at OMB, uh, but that's an understatement. But that's the reason that I finally figured out uh, that 
The USDA Rural Development is a group that's out there, it's looking at the needs, it's serving the people of rural America, and they need resources, and they need up-to-date information technology so they can process the papers. And that's a message I carried since leaving the Senate because I remained active in advocating for rural housing. And the people of the Bipartisan Policy Center were kind enough to ask me to be a co-chair with former HUD Secretary Henry Cisneros. And we had three, three good years. We had a bipartisan commission, a whole lot of people who knew a whole lot more about housing than I do. But uh, we came, we worked with groups like HACC, the National Rural Housing Commission, LISC, and of course, Neighbor Works, uh, uh, which had uh, a very, very important role in uh, the, uh, putting in a rural chapter in the commission's final report. I said, hey guys, you're talking about HUD all the way through here in city housing. I know there are problems there. I worked on those problems. But we've got to have a chapter recognizing the importance of rural housing. And they put it in. But uh, unfortunately, even small victories like getting a chapter in the BPC report for protecting the uh, small pot of federal dollars for rural housing is never easy. I served in public office for more than 40 years and constantly fought against those who considered the heartland in rural areas is flyover country. That's not flyover country, gang. That's where if you're smart, you fly to that area. That's where you want to see it. But uh, <laughs> despite depending daily on the labor of the miners who work the mines, the ranchers that raise the cattle, the farmers that grow the wheat and corn, uh, policymakers don't often understand the unique housing uh, affordable housing needs of those people who are working and serving the nation in rural America. To combat that problem, those of us from rural America need to do a better job uh, educating the rest of the country on the importance of our com communities. Now, I know this solution sounds simple, but trust me, nothing about educating policymakers, particularly those in Washington, is easy. As a farmer, former Washington policymaker, I can tell you that it's, that it's true, and I can say that. But what you all are doing here this week is the right way to go about it. Regrouping and retooling now will just prepare you to be effective advocates in 2015, just in time to educate members in the 114th Congress. Don't worry, that brings my remarks about to an end. I'm no, I'm not a, no longer a senator. I have given up the filibuster business, never was. I couldn't stay awake long through. <laughs> If I spoke about 20 minutes, I'd go to sleep five minutes after the crowd did. So I knew, I knew to keep it, keep it short. But in closing, let me just say again a heartfelt thanks to you, to the organization, to HACC, and to all of you who are working so hard all the time to keep uh, families access safe and affordable housing in communities like my hometown in Audrain County, Missouri. I'm grateful to you and your good work. Thank you and best wishes.